Let's solve the advent of code 2021 day 15 puzzle using Go. I do have most of an Ivy solution, but it's super complicated and has an off by one error somewhere that I haven't found. So let's just write a simple Go version. The puzzle asks us to find the shortest path through this grid from the upper left to the lower right, where the distance is the sum of the digits along the path, not counting the upper left. Now, there are plenty of algorithms for shortest paths on graphs, but most of them want the graph in a very general representation. And here we have a graph with a very large number of nodes. The input is 100 by 100, so that's 10,000 nodes, but relatively few edges. And it's much easier to keep the graph in this compact form and work with it directly. So let's start a Go program and read the input. Let's see, we want to read sample.text. And then we want to split that into the grid lines. And then let's just make sure that it worked. We'll print the length of the grid. All right, and let's uh, watch go run x dot go. There we go, it's 10, that's good. So now to find the shortest distance to the bottom right corner, we actually have to compute the shortest distance to every possible grid point. So let's do that. Uh, we'll make a two dimensional grid to hold all the distances we need. Slice, slice of int. And then for each row, we'll make a new one. And then we need to fill that in. And let's make it a million, which is clearly way too big, which will you know, work out when we're looking for, did we improve? And so to make the search more efficient, we want to visit the grid points in order of minimal distance so that when we visit a point, we know for sure that its distance is settled. We're not going to find some better way to get to it later. Now, the usual way to do this is with a heap of pending points ordered by distance. And then if we find a shorter path to a particular point that we haven't visited yet, we update its position in the heap. I don't particularly want to write that code. Uh, even if we reuse Go's container heap package, we still have to deal with keeping track of where things are in the heap and doing the update. And it's just a giant pain. And instead, we can observe that in this n by n grid, where each step costs at most nine, the minimum distance from the top left to the bottom right can't possibly be larger than just taking nines all the way across and nines all the way down, which is 2n times nine. So let's call it 20n. And then let's just make that many different work queues, one for each possible distance, and then we don't need the heap. So the work in the queue will be a point, an xy coordinate pair, and then let's just make all our queues. Point uh, 20 times n. Now, when we find a path to a grid point with distance d, we need to add it to the queues. So let's write that function. Um, we're going to want to check to see if the distance is any better than what we had before. Um, if it's not, then we're done. And otherwise, we're going to want to save that distance. And then we're going to want to add it to the appropriate work queue. And that's it. All right, since we're not doing the whole update p's point in the heap thing, it means that we might enqueue uh, p in work of five and then find out, oh, we can get there in four and put it in work of four. and Oh, we can get in there three and put it in work of three. None of that matters because there's only four different ways to get into a point. So worst case, we put each point into the work queues four times and we'll only visit it the one time and then not find anything to do on the other times. Totally fine, four x is not gonna kill us. Um, so now to kick things off, we just need to enqueue the upper left corner, which is 0 0.00 and has distance zero. And then we just need to do the work, looking over every single work queue and increasing distance. And then for every point in the work queue, we visit that point. All right, so now all we need to do is write the visit function. So visit is uh, func taking a point, and we need to fill this in. We're going to start by figuring out what the distance of that point is. Now we know for sure that this is the best possible distance for the point P at the moment where we visit it. We're not going to find something better. So if this is the bottom right corner, then we're done. So let's print that. Print one D, and then we'll just exit. All right. Otherwise, we need to keep exploring the graph. And in particular, we need to queue the things that we can get to from this point. So we can get to x minus 1 comma y. And let's see. We can get to x plus 1. And then we can get to y minus 1, 
and we can get to y plus one. All right, that all looks good. Now, actually it doesn't look good. There's a couple problems. One is that we're not checking for moving off the grid with p.x minus one and so on. And the other is that we're not actually adding the distance or the grid value for the place that we're going. And rather than write that four times, let's just put that at the top of add. We'll say that if px is less than zero or py is less than zero or px is bigger than n minus bigger than equal to n, py is bigger than n, then just return and otherwise uh, add the grid value that we want. So it's the grid of p dot x and p dot y minus zero. All right, so that should be okay. And I think that's actually it. So let's see. It says 41. We forgot to subtract out the, um, now that we're adding the grid points, we need to subtract out the original value when we start. There we go, 40. That is the right answer. All right, so let's try the input. 540, all right, let's see. All right, that's correct. So now in part two, it says to use a graph that's five times larger in each dimension, and we're gonna replicate it by copying it forward, but then also adding one mod nine to each of the values, and so you know, if we had done something else, maybe this would actually be, uh, you know, too big and we'd have to change the algorithm. But this is a pretty simple algorithm and Go is not imposing any kind of serious overhead. So making this graph 25 times larger is really not gonna affect things. So let's do that. Let's see, the first thing we're gonna need is a function to figure out how to produce the new bytes. So if we have a byte C and we're in replication step R, we're gonna want to subtract one from C and then add r mod nine and then put the one back. All right. And so now we can replicate to extend each row in the grid. We'll say get the old row and then we'll do four replications from one up to but not including five. And let's see, so then for every character in the old row, we're gonna say grid of i is append grid of i of REPL of c r. All right, that looks good. And so now we've replicated all the rows out, they're bigger, and now we need more rows. So we'll do the same sort of thing. We'll save the old grid. We'll walk over it four more times. And then we're gonna have to look at each character in the row, or no, we have to look at each row in the grid, in the old grid. And then we're gonna wanna make a new row. And for each character in the row, we're gonna to wanna to say extend, let's extend REPL of CR. All right, oh, we need to actually add that to the grid. So we'll say grid equals append grid extend. All right, so let's see. Let's try running that. It says 2879, let's try the sample and see if we get the right answer. 315, 315 is the right answer. Go back to the other one, 2879. All right, we got our stars. Have a nice day.